Thank you all for having me here. I'm thrilled to be speaking with you, even though it is virtual. Of course, my hope is that we'll be able to meet together in person very soon as we recover and reopen. I'm so very honored to be receiving the 2020 Paul Dana Marketing Vision Award from ACE for the work USDA has done on the Higher Blends Infrastructure Incentive Program, or HBIP as we call it for short. ACE has been a leader in working with retailers to expand markets for ethanol, so I'm pleased that this great market development work like ACE has been conducting will be greatly expanded thanks to the HBIP program. These station owners will be able to offer their customers new, higher octane, clean burning fuels that support higher paying jobs in rural America at lower prices. Certainly our hope and expectation is that as more retailers offer higher ethanol blends and as more consumers get used to purchasing higher blends, we will build market long term for market driven demand for ethanol. And of course, greater consumption of higher ethanol blends means increased demand for corn and other feedstocks, and that benefits farmers and rural communities. That's a win-win-win situation for all of us, and I'm proud that USDA could help play a part in that. Thank you for presenting me today with this award, and I'm truly honored, and USDA is honored. At USDA, we also recognize how challenging the pandemic has been on the corn and ethanol industries, especially since Americans have been driving less, making uh, gasoline and ethanol consum consumption drop significantly. The good news is, is we've seen driving and consumption picking back up, and we want that trend to continue. USDA continues to work with the administration to ensure that the commitment that President Trump made last fall to ensure that the renewable volume obligations for ethanol and biodiesel are met and are not undermined by small refinery exemptions, including gap year exemptions that have been filed by small refiners going back almost a decade. As you know, we engaged with EPA and the White House regarding not appealing the 10th Circuit's decision on small refinery exemptions and are closely following the gap year small refiner exemption applications that have been made by the refiners. Secretary Purdue and I understand the negative impacts that these additional SREs would have on biofuel use, and we continue to communicate this within the administration. As I know you know, and as part of President Trump's October 2019 commitment, we at USDA are enthusiastic about the HBIP program we ruled out in May, which will make available up to $100 million in Commodity Credit Corporation funds for competitive grants and activities designed to expand the availability and sale of renewable fuels. We believe that by significantly expanding the availability and distribution of higher blend fuels such as E15 and E85, long-term and market-driven demand from consumers can be significantly expanded. USDA received 121 applications from 27 different states for HBIP. We are reviewing those applications now and will be getting the money out the door starting in September. Additionally, as part of the President's budget request for fiscal year 2021, the President has requested another $100 million in funding to continue this valuable program. President Trump supports America's ethanol industry. We at USDA will continue to work with him, others in the White House, and EPA to ensure that ethanol is blended at the rate set by EPA. We also know that it's been challenging overall uh, for American agriculture, and those challenges have intensified during the coronavirus pandemic. But USDA has taken action to mitigate the impact on America's farmers, producers, and consumers. As you know, at the direction of President Trump, USDA announced $19 billion in immediate assistance for America's farmers and ranchers under the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program known as CFAP. The first 16 billion of that funding went out in the form of direct payments to farmers and ranchers to help them through these tough times. 
We have listened to our producers and added additional commodity to what's being covered. We're also gearing up to announce another $14 billion in CFAP round two, which will incorporate much of the feedback we've received to make sure that it works best for the people that need it. Right now, we're focusing CFAP relief directly to farmers. To expand that relief effort to processors, which I know ACE has been working on, USDA really looks to Congress to identify which specific sectors of processors should receive assistance under any additional appropriations. As you know, there are tens of thousands of processors throughout the country who process all forms of commodities, so we really are asking Congress to be specific. The second part of the CFAP that's been announced, of course, was providing $3 billion for an innovative new food distribution program called the Farmers to Family Food Box Program. Just a few weeks ago, President Trump himself authorized an additional billion dollars for this program. Under this program, we're partnering with national, regional, and local suppliers whose workforce has been significantly impacted by the closure of restaurants, hotels, and other food service businesses to purchase meat, dairy, and produce to box up and give to families in needs. I've traveled to see firsthand that this food that would otherwise go to waste be distributed to people that have fallen on hard times. It truly is a great example of Americans helping Americans and something we should all be proud of. Finally, as we look ahead, USDA continues to work to open markets for America's hardworking farmers and ranchers to sell their U.S. grown products in high demand, including ethanol and dried distillers grains. The ratification of the USMCA on July 1st is proof that President Trump Unwavering support of farmers and ranchers is a big win for American agriculture. And while there have been slowdowns due to COVID-19, the China Phase 1 trade agreement is being implemented and China is making some big purchases. We're strongly encouraging China to make purchases of both ethanol and dried distillers grains to meet their purchase commitments and will continue to do so. President Trump remains committed to getting better deals for America's farmers and ranchers uh, around the world. In conclusion, on behalf of me personally and all of us at USDA, I want to thank you for this award. I look forward to seeing all of you again soon.